Penaunda, Chris Sonor. Welcome back to the Principality Stadium in the Road to Principality Series. We step up from the primary school to the secondary for the WRU Intermediate Group Year 9 final between Bromerthin and Escola Pant. Round of a note, blue they now. The forwards, Ivan Davis, Kai Davis, and Kai Howells, the front row. Number 20 in the second row, Stefan Proctor, with Sean Jones alongside him. Caleb Morris, Keen Turner, and Evan Redding, the back row trio. Max Morgan and his James line up in the halfback position. Abel Reese and Thomas Jones. Combined 12 and 13 on the back three, Jack Johnson, Johan James, and 15, Max Hastings. And the replacements, Griff Jones, Guion Jones, Howells, Yolo Morgan, and Oscar Lewis. Ryan James, Max Llewellyn, and Jack Morris. And we have a look at a scholar pant from Talbot Green. Evan Lomas, Oliver Kavanagh and Gavin Williams, the front row trio. Cameron Phillips and Ben Stevenson providing some ballast in the second row. Morgan Prithero, Regan Gibbons and Harrison Lewis, the back row. Oliver Mahoney, Jake Davis Barkley, 9 and 10. Sam Morgan Richards, Jake Ayres. 12 and 13, and the speedsters out wide. MJ Cottrell on the left wing, Thomas Lane on the right, and Maxon Berridge playing 15 with Archie Hancock, Seb George, Joseph Hawksworth, Josh Thompson, and Gethin Rayleigh, the replacement for Ascol Apant. And uh, we saw Ascol Bromer in here in uh, the under 18s final yesterday they lost uh, they won sorry in the vase final by 20 points to 19 against broad de never and they'll probably be here again in numbers hoping the year 19 uh, year nine will be able to replicate that victory uh, and win griffith and simon edwards alongside me owen gwyneth in the country box and when we were treated to a magnificent festival of rugby in the under 11s and now we're stepping up uh, an age grade here we're hoping now to see uh, an even better standard of rugby well they've got a lot to live up to because that uh, cup final the skills on show by Pontypool schools in particular and that's not to uh, deny any credit at all to the bridge end schools but they just couldn't cope with the uh, tenacity of the uh, the pooler if you like but it's been great you know the, the three days so far, we, we've seen an improvement in skills year on year. I think we saw the girls here on Tuesday showing exceptionally good skills, uh, tendency perhaps to move the ball, uh, try and laterally across field perhaps. But here, um, I'm confident that we are going to see a, a cracking match if uh, Bromer then repeat the performance of their senior squad yesterday in the school of Pant, fresh, some of them from uh, the Roslyn Park Sevens yesterday. Uh, and Simon Edwards, part of the Cary Schools. Uh coaching group and, and the setup I'm sure you'll be uh, eager to see some of the Ascola Pant players who will be feeding up to that uh, Cardiff setup Yeah, I think um, in the in the long, long run they'll be feeding into the Cardiff um, setup moving forward but Yeah, this will be a really exciting game to see the two very good teams both um, won their both won their semi-finals in um, uh, good fashion last week so I'm um, excited to see both teams compete today Yeah, and they're on the field, Ascol Bro Merlin in their purple and black on the left side. And Escola Pant in the blue and black yeah. on the right. The referee getting some late warm-up drills in. Yeah, he's limbering up, fair play to him. He's ready for um, a fast game, obviously. Um, he, he must have seen the semi-finals and he's getting ready to go. Yeah, getting some late stretches and Escola Pant split into their forwards and backs on the right hand side getting themselves pumped up for this one yeah. uh, Esculapant 
in their blue, ready to kick off with number 10, Davis Barkley with a left boot, swings it high. And uh, we can already see a few lumps in that Escola Pan team. Yeah, I think the number eight is a solid looking player there, isn't he? And another solid mullet to go with his uh, physical stature. Well, he's a standout player just for his physical stature. Under 14s, my goodness. Yeah, I think there was a photo of him um, last year from the cup final, and he was a big lad when he represented the pants in the final here last time as well. Yeah, Harrison Lewis, you know, that's the, the dustbin. <laughs> So it's early ball for Skull Pants on the halfway line, using the forwards to suck a few of those Bromerdin defenders in. Penalty advantage being played. Free play for the Blue Shirts. Here he is, Harrison Lewis. Boshes it up over the halfway line. Well tackled in the end. Still probing down that narrow side. Gone forward, so back for the high tackle in midfield. And it's a positive start for Escola Pants, but Promerdin holding firm. You see the way Escola Pant want to play, getting Harrison Lewis on the ball early with a couple of, couple of big carries to start the game. Just another line out for Escola Pant. They tucked it up the jumper early doors. Will they do the same shortened line out to hit the front? Gibbons, the recipient. But uh, some pulling on the jersey or the arm in the air. So it's a penalty for Bromerdin. Yeah, there is a competition for possession in uh, this under 14 to all intents and purposes, isn't it? We've seen possession go with the throw or the put in, in uh, previous matches at. Uh, the uh, most junior levels, but uh, it's a full-blown match here, full-size pitch as well. Yeah, I'm of the age where school years confuse me. Is there form one, two, and three back in my day? When <laughs> seven, seven, eight, and nine. nine. <laughs> <laughs> Bromerdin into the pant 22 with only a couple of minutes on the clock. Kai Davis, it's another battle in there with Lewis. Winning the scraps, but it's going to be a, a knock-on advantage and scrum to the purple of Bromerdin. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a scrappy start, a few nerves from the boys here. It's, it's obviously such a massive occasion for all the lads playing on the Principality, and the boy, boys are lucky to get the opportunity. Yeah, maybe, I'm not sure if this is a, a true statement, but maybe as you get older, you become more aware of your surroundings as well, you have a more appreciation of the history of... Uh, the principality and what's been here before. Oh, definitely. I, th I think the boys have probably been bouncing around school all week in um, expectation for this. Yeah, looking to make their own piece of history, write their own chapter in the uh, in the history here. First uh, time at the Principality Stadium for these uh, players, most of them certainly. Oh, it's a short ball by Abel Reese to Thomas Jones. I think Thomas Jones was running the dummy angle. Miscommunication in the starter play. And again, an error and handling error. Showing maybe the signs of nerves. Yeah, he's just overrun it, screaming for that short dummy pass. I think uh, Abel Reese was uh, supposed to throw the, the ball by the back door. Decent scrum by Promer then. Davis Barkley, that's decent distance on it, but Max Hastings turns away from the first couple of tackles, gives time for that Bromerding pack to get numbers around the ball. Rhys James prods it downfield, that's a bounce of a rugby ball, nearly gets a, a toe to it, James, well recovered, Berridge. Pant. They played for the penalty and they've got it. 
Mahoney has a free play. Bit of space out wide and a couple more passes, mate. Make the difference, Regan Gibbons. Lewis, now then, he's going to take some stopping. He's stretched his stride, and what a chop tackle by Johan James recovering. But a scholar pant. Showing exactly who their danger man is. On the front foot, Davis Barkley. Pummeled backwards. Gibbons involved again. This promoting defence starting to get stretched. Space up the middle. Big handoff. Escola Pant into the 22 with Thomas Lane. <coughs> Lane placing it back. Davis Barkley inside to Harrison Lewis. The man who started the move off, and that's a big oh, hit on Gavin tackle. Williams. Jake Hayes trying to buy some time. Kavanagh put to the floor. Trying to put some width on the ball, slightly static, the back line. Allowing Bromer then to take up the space. That's better. Mahoney, once again out to lane. Good continuity here by a skull of pants, keeping possession. Prodro. Yeah, the pants back row have been really prominent in the early few minutes of this game. The, the big number eight and then the two two flankers with that extra bit of pace. Yeah, Harrison Lewis doing some damage, but it's now the turn of Ayers, Ayers. Out towards his centre partnership with Morgan Richards, nearly stretching for the line. Metre short. I think there's knock-on and oh. fortune there for a skull of pant. Multiple but phases from a pant there, but some solid first-time tackling. Johan James in particular on the right wing for uh, a skull bromer then. And the low chop tackles. Um, absolutely brilliant. And this is a big man to stop. But look at this tackle coming in. Textbook gets low. That's an, a textbook tackle. Again, just body shape gets beneath the carrier. And Bromer, then I think we'll have to get uh, the defence on the money today against some of these strikers of Escola Pant and Harrison Lewis. I'm sure will be a runner. Yeah, let off there for Escola Bromer, then the early engagement from Escola Pant has allowed uh, Bromer then to uh, clear their lines. And that's a decent exit. Yeah. It's a free kick, so it's going to be a line out to Skullapant on the outskirts of the Bromer, then 22. Yeah, bit of an interesting fact about um, Gavin Williams, the prop from Skullapant. He represented the school last year on the wing, so a bit of a change of position for him. Good way to programme as Skullapant then. <laughs> Must be. <laughs> now the backs have an opportunity, it's uh, number four, Cameron Phillips in midfield. Turned over. And uh, Bromer then have been defending for the last five minutes, but they've been stubborn defenders, must be said. A bit of space in the backfield, well spotted. And a super kick by Rhys James. Yeah, I think Kane Turner, the um, open side from Bromer, then he's been sniffing around for those turnovers o over the last few breakdowns. It was good to see him get rewarded there by the referee. Yeah, that's well played by his James. He he spotted maybe the back three hadn't pedaled backwards in time to take their positions. And uh, an accurate kick to split the back three and more well, than uh, a penalty and a kick. Bromer, they now in a. Uh, the 22 of a scholar pant, Caleb Morris. Morgan James fakes the kick. Needs a bit of help, uh, Abel Reese. Gone to the flank, Hastings. And it's fumbled for the Forsley, Jack Johnson. A yeah, slight hesitation there from the uh, outside half. Reese uh, James. Momentum lost momentarily, but uh, 
good position here for Bromer then. They've held their own in the, the scrums against a, a heavier punt forward unit. Bromer then will be looking to box a scholar punt in here. And a decent scrum and decent shove by the Bromer then pack, putting pressure on the left boot of Davis Barkley. So here is a second opportunity for Jack Johnson, chopped down. Possessions there. Caleb Morris beats the first man with his feet. Keen Turner driven backwards. Both defences on top at the moment in the early exchanges in this year nine final. Mahoney, Lewis uses his hands on this occasion, draws the man and draws the player. Yeah, there's a charge down. Yeah, the kick a little too far from uh, Brummer, then outside half, uh, Rhys James. And he had uh, two or three men outside him. Yeah, the referee may be having a word with a couple of players about some back chat. As we see the kick by Max and Berridge, charged down. As in any final, I think spirits may be high and tongues slightly loose. Nevertheless, it is a line out to a skull of pant on the far side inside the Bromer then half. It's a 30 minutes each way contest. 10 minutes in. I'm still trying to get a grips with uh, a young man called Proctor in the second row somehow. And uh, knowing who his father was, of course, Wayne Proctor, the uh, Wales wing three quarter. Although he would say that he faced Lo Jonah Lomu on one occasion and Jonah never got past him. <laughs> that would have been in the 1995 World Cup, if I remember rightly. Oh, that's a good kick. Downfield, searching for the 50 22. It's not gonna go over that touchline, but nevertheless, the reply is out on the full, and it's a good gaining ground for Bromer. Then, and Stefan Proctor, son of Wayne Proctor, and Wayne was at the time probably ahead of his time in terms of his professionalism and his fitness and his physique. Yes, very much so. And it's, uh, I can tell you that he's giving back uh, to the game down there in West Wales, in Carmarthenshire. Uh, helping out uh, one or two clubs. If he's half as brave as his dad was on the rugby field, he'll be one, one heck of a player. Yeah, I had the uh, fortunate, or maybe unfortunate, uh, pleasure of having uh, some of the fitness tests and training with him uh, in yesteryear. Now, Bromer then in the 22. Neither side really threatened. A clear opportunity for a try. With a chance for a, skull, a pant on the break. Oh, that's a lovely offload off the floor. Jake Davis Barkley bumping off a tackle or two. Advantage being played. Free play for a skull, a pant. Well, they probe this narrow side, they have an overlap, but cutting back on the angle, Morgan Richards. Nothing obvious available, so they come back for the penalty. High tackle in midfield. Things beginning to settle slightly, but teams seem to be evenly balanced on the pitch. Yeah, that's no surprise, Owen. Like, I think um, the, the results in the semi-final, a pant beat Dufferin Amman 24-0 in the semi-final, and Bromer then beat Tonner Evel 24-3 in the semi-final as well. So two similar results to get to the final for, for them. 
And um, once Shane Williams was involved in a in a coaching capacity, I heard as well. Yeah, that's right. I know Shane, Shane has been helping out with Defrin Amman, and I think we've got um, a young Easterby in the next game as well. So the the quality of the coaching some of these teams have been having has been from some top end professionals. Oh, that's kicked in field. That's a lovely poke inside. Some footballing work maybe will lead to a try. Max and Hastings and the all sorts of pressure. The full back, Bromerdin. Alarm bells ringing. Hacking the ball away anywhere downfield. A skull of punt, sensing a real opportunity. Drifting out, an important tackle by Johan James. It's out to MJ Cottrell. On the angle, Prothero. Now then, a skull of pant. We'll lose those big bulldozing forwards. Regan Gibbons loses the battle on the floor. But there's uh, a penalty taken quickly by the fly half. Davis Barkley. Can the fly half go all the way? Pops out, goes backwards. Play goes on, according to the referee. Pro Merdin. Breathe a sigh of relief. It's not gone dead, however. Cottrell back inside. Can he use the ball? Getting slightly lost. Berridge spots a forward in front of him. Blue shirts to the left, the big man Lewis. He's not going to pass the ball. Does in the end. The delay nearly brings the play to an end, but it's an opportunity for the blindside flank. Prothero, five metres short to fly half again involved. Inside two. Gavin Williams. And for a tight out prop, it's a winger's finish. Yeah, he was sensed that the pressure was going to tell in the end on the uh, Bromer, the try line. There was good chasing initially, when was it, about 20 phases ago, probably by Max and Berridge, the fullback, and created all sorts of problems. Then Harrison Lewis with the initial thrust, the missed tackle, and a great charge here by uh, Morgan Prodro. Equally good tackling, though, and in the end, Gavin Williams had the, the power to drive over. Yeah, good tackle by Thomas Jones, putting his body on the line. Didn't leave much uh, to the imagination, just powered in with the tackle, but unfortunately, the bounce of a ball went the way of a skull of pant. And Jake Davis Barkley aims a kick at the posts, drags it wide, but on the balance of play. The score pants maybe with the better opportunities. And they have taken the first clinically. Thanks to the tight head prop, Gavin Williams. The score Bromerdin Kamadan Nil. The score pant Talbot Green five. Abel Rees lifts. Up the restart. Oh, there's space for Eskola Pant to come on the counter-attack immediately. The flashy yellow boots of the hooker, Oliver Kavanagh, streaking up the field. Harrison Lewis draws in a couple of other shirts with his five-metre dash, Evan Lomas. Bromerdin regrouping. But again, it's difficult to stop this big man, Harrison Lewis. Takes at least two or three players to bring him down. It's back for a penalty. And Eskola Pant uncompromising. Yeah, the man in the uh, yellow headgear and the uh, yellow boots, Sir Reagan Gibbons, certainly impressed in the uh, opening quarter here. Running from deep and causing all sorts of problems. It's all initiated again by uh, Harrison Lewis. Cameron Phillips uh, setting it at outside the Bromerdin 22. Neat step from uh, Sam Morgan Richards. Yeah, 
So I'm Kick through by Gibbons. Oh, he somehow regathers. Long kick downfield. Let's go, Pant invited to run it back. Lane does exactly that. It's another penalty advantage for a high tackle. Is seems to be one way traffic at the moment with Thomas Lane once again involved. The pick, the dart by Mahoney, doors shut. But Bro Murthin really struggling to hang on into this contest at the moment. Let's go, Pant flowing forward. So Kavanagh wearing six to throw in. It's before man line out. Going to the tail. It's an overthrow. Let's go pant. Chancing the arm. And it's a penalty. Maybe. You could argue with the rolling ball work that they could have just stick to basics. Yeah, you'd have thought there with the pants looking so strong up front that maybe maybe would have tried the rolling ball there. They want to play some rugby here at the home of Welsh rugby. And Harrison Lewis. The wrecking ball. He's just a bulldozer. Plowing through that Bromer then. Defence and some silky footwork. Two on one out wide, cutting back in. And Davis Barkley again, a skull of pant flooding forward. Is draws a couple of the purple shirts. Promerdin, a solid purple line formed. Lewis shoves off the first tackler up the middle by Prothero. Yeah, Alison Lewis gives uh, a scullapant uh, front football, doesn't he? You've got to bring him down first time tackling, stop him in his tracks. And it must be said, you know, we're going to have a, a, a variety of shapes and sizes at this age grade. You know, teenagers grow at different speeds. Some players will be taller and bigger. But all these events out in years to come. But at the moment, he is a giant. He's dwarfing over his PE teacher there on the rugby pitch, I think. That's an A-star, a star sir. <laughs> 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 of course, Addison. Uh, but I think it's Kai Davis down for a skull Bromer than receiving some treatment. And imagine for the Bromer then team who are... Working hard in defence, they'll be hoping to see a skull of pants maybe as time goes by. The big players, Harrison Lewis and Regan Gibbons, the big carriers, maybe tiring as this contest goes on. Yeah, if you were with a pant, you might be feeling that you'd like the scoreboard to be a bit healthier in your direction. That they've dominated most of the first half and so far only have the five points to show for it. Yeah, with 25 minutes in. Approximately into this first half, the 30 minute half. Griff Jones coming onto the field. And that's the uh, only score so far in this year nine final. Coming to Gavin Williams, the tight head prop. Bromer, they nail a skull of pants five. As the same on Edwards said, 
could easily be or maybe should be a bit more in favour of Sklopant considering the territory and possession they've had and Harrison Lewis goes by himself down the short side good tackle much needed by Thomas Jones long ball out towards Cottrell into touch the assistant referee on the money I think that was Abel Rees putting him into touch there. Some really good defence by a score Brommer then there. They're dealing with some big characters running hard at them and they're, they're doing well to put them out into touch. Yeah, maybe MJ Cottrell will be wiser to try and cut inside to keep that possession alive. Yeah, Guion Jones Howells on for Brommer then at hooker. I'm just looking down below me here. Uh, Kai Davis, well, he's just sitting down. He's uh, composed. So, just a, a little head injury assessment, perhaps. Was that straight? Yes, according to the referee, Bromer, they would be happy with that decision. Under pressure, the fly half, this James does well. They don't want to play here, bit of hot potato. And quick enough, they're out in the wide channel. And Johan James is off to the races. Oh, he's got some speed. Can he be the last tackler? He loses possession. But that's a sign of Bromer, counter-attacking ability yeah Brummer they know where the their attacking threat is it's on the flanks and it's Jack Johnson there with a, a strong run and the uh, confidence from Brummer then to run the ball from behind their own post knowing that they need to score before half time to uh, to even things up a little and again Harrison Lewis it's got to know who to turn to to give them front football well gathered by Johan James but back for a penalty for offside in midfield. And it's a probably a poor penalty to give away as well. Bromerlin will be disappointed. But this is the break. I'm not sure if Fleece James knew what he was doing. But he gets the ball to Jack Johnson. Nearly hurdles the tackle by Max and Berridge. Well, you mentioned the rolling mall earlier on. We've not seen one uh, yet. It's a good effect, I wonder, on the 22. And uh, surely the Pant must think that while well, we've uh, pummeled away at the Brummerlin defence, surely it has to be a weakness there somewhere. But they've gone for shorter numbers again. Four man line out. Gibbons, the target. Sean Jones competed, but it's a Pant ball. Good tackle by Keane Turner. The leg drive, driving backwards. Short pass bringing on JKs. Again, Eskola Pant relentless in their pressure. Some space with Regan Gibbons hanging in those wide channels. The open side flanker. Lewis, there he is, two tacklers to bring him down. A quick jackal in there, is it a steal? No, says the referee, play goes on. The try scorer, Gavin Williams, is. Scramble defence by Bromerthin, doing well. Bit of momentum lost by Esculapant. Stevenson, Jackson, speed into the ball. Addison Lewis, he'll inject a bit more than just speed. There's a knock to Rhys James. Maybe Sue Escobar Merlin's slight relief in the hope that Rhys James will be healthy. They'll be glad to hear that whistle go just to grab a knee. Grab a word with a skull pants building pressure nicely on that pro in defense. Yeah, you've got Gavin Williams and uh, Harrison Lewis, haven't you? They're punching holes in the uh, Bromerthin defence and they've held out stoutly. And uh, when you think of the possession that Pant have had in the opening uh, half and the score, just uh, five points to nil, just the one score. Yeah, referee having a word with the Bromerthin side. They have been indisciplined in areas, a few high tackles, a few offsides. Mostly happening in the middle third of the field. But I need to be careful as uh, they may be punished for that indiscipline as the, 
the game goes on. So three minutes remaining in the opening half in this under nines final between Eskol Bromerdin from Kamarden and Eskol Pant in Talbot Green, Ponteclean. Bromerdin nil, Pant five. Kai Howells and Ivan Davis swapping sides in the scrum. Ends are changing. Very unusual these days to have multi skilled props able to pack down on either side. This is good scrum as well, causing damage. Harrison Lewis has to tidy up on the base as well. Gets within five metres. Bromerdin. Still have to defend. They need to win the ball. Another pick and go, metre short. Could be Gavin Williams again in there. Harrison Lewis is waiting. And there's the number three, the tight head prop. And Gavin Williams has been held up somehow or other. Super defence by Bromerdin. Yeah, some great defence there. I'd say if Bromerdin managed to get into half time without conceding another point, the coaches and the teachers will be really happy with him. Not the best of restarts. And it's Max and Berry streaking into the 22, hands off the first man. Gibbons, Gibbons towards the right hand corner. Somehow gets it. And Magic have an offload in. And once again, Pant have been held up. Well, that drop kick out in the midfield is always going to cause uh, problems, isn't it? I mean, you try and limit the damage and kick towards the sidelines, but uh, all credit to Bromer then here. They've uh, held out once again. A bit of white line fever, perhaps, from uh, Regan Gibbons. Yeah, you try to keep it on that 15 channel, I would imagine, and there you get your defensive line set up to, to box the team into that 15. By kicking it straight down the field, especially when your defence is lopsided. You're asking for all sorts of trouble. Well, that's a better restart into the 15 channel. Waiting for some assistance. Thomas Lane, not sure what he wants to do. Takes contact in the end. Hanson Lewis has to do some rucking. Gibbons nearly got there for the try. Cuts and weaves. He's been a, uh, an obvious performer in the first half, not just for his flashy headgear. Good angle by Morgan Richards. Now there's numbers here. Danger, Gavin Williams offloads to Ayres. Ayres has to cut back inside. Opportunity loss, maybe. The tackling from Brummerdin has been superb. Top class. But will it pay? Will they... Be tiring towards the end of this first half. Questions being asked. Well, they're getting nothing from the referee in the breakdown area. They've had their hands on the ball so many times, but not getting the uh, the rub of the green, so to speak. I wonder if Escalapant will go for three here just to get something for their efforts. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, we, they've, they've been banging away at that door for a while and they haven't got through, so um, it makes sense for them to take the three points, especially if this could be last play before half time. I'm not sure. Yeah, and it's. Uh, a routine penalty, we'd imagine, for Jake Davis Barkley. Over it goes. And a skull of pant, take along to eight with Pro Mirthin. Still a scoreless. And there is time to restart before the interval. And Plummer, they, they've been under the pump for the majority of this first half, but they're still in this cup final. And we've seen throughout the road to Principality Series, things can change. Just needs a score. But it's not gone ten, play goes on. And there's a, maybe a high tackle in there. Good steal. Ball's turned over, and that's a, a good decision to nudge downfield. But it's out on the head. And that is the end of the first half. A full-blooded contest in this cup final. We've not been treated to an abundance of tries, but we've had quality rugby between a skull Bromerdin and a skull of Pant. And at the interval, it is Bromerdin nil. A skull a Pant eight. The second half to come.
The second half of the under 90. Let's start that one again. Second half of the year nine cup final. About to begin. Ascol Bro Murdin Nil. Ascol Apant eight. It is the road to Principality Series supported by Go Dot Compare. And Brummerlin in the purple and black shirts to restart, playing from right to left. Please, James, lofts it high. And uh, Regan Gibbons, one of the standout performers in the first half, slides out of a tackle or two. Harrison Lewis as well, for obvious reasons, making an impact. His physical size and strength difficult to deal with. Yes, gets over the halfway line. Good ball, quick ball for Escola Panda. Space in the backfield. Is that a 50 22 or was it just inside? The assistant referee. No, it's uh, going to be Bromer in ball. Mm. It was close. <laughs> Not that we've been told of, no TMO. Promer then getting away with that one. Proctor wins the ball in the air. Pops backwards. Ivan Davis or Kai Howells with the carry. Trying to buy some space for the kicking team. Gone outside the 22, so they can't go direct to touch, remember? It's a decent effort downfield into that five-metre channel. Where's the chase? Isn't a bad chase, but it's a good return by Oliver Mahoney. Gibbons. Again, doesn't seem as the biggest of uh, ball carriers, but such an elusive runner. Strong. Lane. Oh, good angle, coming from depth, well dealt with. That was Morgan, Prudro. And again, the Brawl Murthing defence holding firm somehow or other. Plenty of questions being asked by a Skullapant. Please, James aims the penalty towards the touchline. And it's been a... A tough 40 minutes for Bromer, then... Yeah, this seldom. is the man most likely to, isn't he, Regan Gibbon? This is the skill of the game so far, I think. The pace and the, the handoff there and that little neat offload. Yeah, Bromer, then have... had few opportunities to attack and they need a platform and that line out isn't quite ticking. Mahoney, good demi run by Morgan Richards. Big collision in midfield. He is just waiting for options to develop. Superb oh. tackling again, unfortunately, a high tackle. Must be some farmers in this promoter inside. They're taken quickly by Harrison Lewis, not wasting any time. It's come loose. Gone backwards. Again, Gibbons, he really is inspiring his team. But it's gone forward. Regan Gibbons, if something, he's carrying the team at the moment. And even though he's uh, shorter in stature to Harrison Lewis, he's punching some big holes into that poor Merlin defence. And not just because of the, uh, the yellow headgear, but he reminds you of Harry Deves, doesn't he? The Ospreys flanker. Here he goes again. Neat footwork, nice offload, not for the first time. But you have to compliment Brummer then on their tackling. How long can they hold out? That is the question. I think the big question is, is how tired these pant boys after two days away in London and Rosslyn Park? Well, here's a test. Yeah, Brummer then attacking from deep and not getting any change for their attacking efforts. 
a school of pants showing that they they have the fresh legs at the moment turnover another person that regan gibbon remind you of is uh, tian sparrow who plays under 18s for the scarlets um, another guy not the biggest in statures but a, a superb ball carrier but also very effective in the tackle area Good chasing, but well taken by Sean Jones. Bromerdin haven't been out of their half in the, this second period. Drifting across field, Abel Reese, But he's willing and able to do the hard yards, the hard work up to the halfway line. Could be a high tackle on him by Ayers. Now then, it's an opportunity for Bromerdin to try and get some field position. Steady does it now, isn't it? And this man, he's got a good boot on him, uh, Rhys James. He leaves it uh, for Rhys. A bump that uh, Rhys James had uh, towards the end of the first half may have uh, caused a few more problems than we, uh, than we perhaps were able to see. Not a bad effort considering the angle. But using that trusty left foot to send the team into the 22. Let's see if this gives Bromer then a nice platform. It's been a long while since they've been up in the 22. So um, let's see if they can get any points from this entry. If I'm honest, I can't remember the, the last time they were in the 22. Definitely the first time in the second half they've been this high up the field. Taken by Proctor <laughs> and Harrison Lewis nearly getting as high without any lifters. Yeah, that would... Man in front of the ball carrier. Yeah, silly error, disappointing error. And considering that chances are few and far between for Bromer, they need to be clinical with those. Yeah, and everybody needs to be on the same hymn sheet, uh, don't they, really? Everybody knew what needed to be done. Um, but the, the impetus, the initial impetus wasn't quite there, not quite the understanding, perhaps. The communication, not what it should be. There's still plenty of time in this match. Gibbons. Good ball. Guided down. Again, it's the Braun Murthing defence that's keeping them in this contest. Pant trying to put some width on the ball. Maybe some crossing in midfield. No, says the referee. Max and Berridge cuts inside. He's looked dangerous with the ball in hand, hasn't he, as Berridge? If uh, Scott Pants can get this into the 13 channel, maybe closed off now. Addison Lewis. And here comes Evan Lomas. And another penalty given away at the breakdown. Not rolling away. Ah, that's a good tackle. Gets slow, drives up. Now there's some space in the backfield, not going for touch. Turning. Jack oh, Johnson. Wicked ball. Oh, that's a bounce of a rugby ball for you. Um, perhaps he's lucky that he wasn't able to get the ball back inside because uh, there were more punt players there than, uh, than Brummer then. <clears throat> Clever kick. Sense that there was... Uh, a deficient lineup in the backfield. Kavanagh. Names that secure possession. Lewis. The decoy on this occasion. Davis Barkley, the fly half, slides and slips out the first tackle. There's space on the far side. This is a skull pants moment to try and secure a victory. To open up a healthy gap on the scoreboard. Harrison Lewis drags another couple of players with him. The Jackal unsuccessful. Gibbons. Here he goes. And that's a try. He's got elusive pace. Strength. And at the moment, the key difference in this under-9s cup final. Well, it had to come, didn't it? 
He's threatened all afternoon, has uh, Regan Gibbons. Lightning quick. Yeah, his acceleration off the mark, as soon as he gets the ball, he just he can change from zero to 60 in no time whatsoever, and he gets over the line. He has been a key point of difference. He's been able to put his side on the front foot almost on every touch of the ball. And with a now he 15. What was that missed? Ooh. I nearly chalked that down as a, as a, a conversion, but it remains a two score game. And Regan Gibbons with the second try of the afternoon for a skull a pant. Promerthin nil, a skull a pant 13. And that conversion could have been uh, such an important kick in the context of the game. Yes, yeah, so that, that try was created actually by Jake Davis Barkley. You know, he ran across field and kept the uh, Bromerdin defence guessing. And then the the third phase came, and, and Gibbons didn't didn't need a second invitation, did he? Well, that's uh, another right over run, head down, one way for Sam Morgan Richards. And is that Bromerdin defence starting to tie it? And they've won the penalty on the floor. They've answered my question with an emphatic no. Well, as good as Reagan Gibbons is in attack, that man wearing 14 for Borumar, then Ewan James. He's a gutsy player and he throws everything into every tackle. And we are looking at all the uh, go dot compare player of the match. One Ooh, or two players. Has there. he pushed it? Has he pushed it? Oh. If I'm honest, I don't think the assistant referee was in the, the best position to make that decision. But the referee maybe have given some assistance. Let's have a look again. He's gone for the corner. Mm. <laughs> well done, Max and Berridge. <laughs> yeah. Well then, Brommer then, wasteful. Skull pant, looking to make them pay from deep. Good tackle once again by Thomas Jones. Just gra grabbing a shirt. Numbers in midfield. Prothero, the back row involved again. Danger signs in the left channel for Brommer then. As your skull pant come forward again. But the penalty's given. Good contest on the floor. And maybe signs of fatigue. And all that defensive effort from Bromerdin starting to show in a couple of players. On this near side on the halfway line. A bit of cramp maybe for Thomas Jones. Romer then preparing some changes. Ian James on the uh, touchline preparing with uh, Max and Morgan. The scrum half uh, about to depart. Well, this could be his final act, his final passage of play. and Morgan with the feed and a bit of pressure. Oliver Mahoney all over him. Brummer, they need to get around their scrum half. Ivan Davis playing nine. And then Stefan Proctor playing ten. I think that's sign of a, a dysfunctional Brummer in attack. But somehow or other, they may salvage the situation and turn the ball over the floor. Let's go to Pantar there. They chip and chase. 
Well taken by Rhys James. Beats the man as well. Looks for support. Broken field for Bromer. This is the type of attacking play they need and want. That's better in with the carry. Guion Jones Howells. And uh, a sharp blast on the whistle by the referee. What's the decision here? The assistant referee coming in with a, a word or two. Seemingly it's going to be a penalty for a skull of pants, maybe. Or has he just sent uh, both sets of players back ten? Yeah, we're not party to what the, uh, the referee has to say to the players, so we can only guess and judge by... Uh, by some gestures. A clear communication. Or clear hand signals for us, win. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> he was bringing in a Boeing 747. <laughs> but the last gesture was for a high tackle. Now then, Abel Reese has got to place this one as near as possible, but this side of the corner flag on this occasion. He's going to go for it again. The Bromer then forwards have struggled for penetration. So the closer they are, the better for the purple of Bromer then. So a change at nine for Bromer then. Maxen Morgan leaves, departs with Ryan James onto the field. You sense if Brummer, they're going to challenge the scoreboard and challenge a scholar pants. They need to capitalise on this situation. Proctor, the target, guided backwards by a fingertip. I think it's in Bromer in possession, Escola Pant. Try to make nuisance of themselves. There's a slip in there by Evan Redding. We haven't seen much of the number eight in an attacking sense. Please, James. Going across field, Bromer then, and away from their support runners. Ball is there. Once again, please, James fires it out. This is a chance for Jack Johnson. Johnson, he's in. Now then, game on, cup final is on. Yeah, Brummer almost lost it in the line out, didn't they? But uh, they uh, kept their composure. Good work by the outside half initially at East James and uh, rushing aside one or two would-be tacklers. And uh, this man has been waiting all afternoon for just one opportunity to get on the score sheet. And that'll cause uh, a pant of a look at themselves for the remainder of this match. And it's a rare foray into the 22 by Bromer then. And he did feel they needed to be accurate and clinical with their attacks. And Jack Johnson did exactly what the doctor ordered. And get a first score of the day for Bromer then. The conversion slips wide. So it's Bromer then five, a skull of pant 13. He just hooked the conversion to the left there. It was a big kick. So it remains an eight-point margin. Brummer, they need two scores. But they put some doubt in the minds of a skull pan to have controlled the majority of this cup final. Oh, and a penalty given away. Maybe not in a kicking position for points. But certainly it's going to pant can charge into that Bromer then 22. Well, that's a super chip. Considering the angle and, and the left boot. Exactly where he wanted, just on the five metre line and an opportunity perhaps to uh, get that rolling mall going because uh, the pants certainly have the physicality and have the big men. You've got Gavin Williams and uh, 
Harrison Lewis, but he's out in midfield at the moment, waiting perhaps for for the opportunity. Surprised again, that's a school of Panta going for a four-man line out to the middle towards Ben Stevenson off the top towards the big man. Harrison Lewis, Lewis chopped short. Forwards, Gavin Williams, we saw him score in the first half. And the tight end is over again. And he's crushed any thoughts of us called Bromer. Then he's come back. And uh, what a way to reply to conceding. With immediacy down the other end. And restoring a Scolopant's lead. That 13-point lead. Yeah, Pant know where their strengths are. We just mention, well, you know, why a shortened lineout? Well, that's exactly the reason. Get Lewis, uh, Harrison Lewis on the charge and uh, create uh, the momentum and create the, uh, the platform for Gavin Williams to go over. Barkley with the conversion. And the scoreboard. Looks very healthy for a skull a pant. Bromer then five, a skull a pant 20. Yeah, great time for a pant to strike back. That's really taken the wind out of the sails of Bromer then. Lewis, the battering ram, makes a dent in the defence, pops it away, Regan Gibbons, again, makes yards. There's a player down in the backfield for Bromerdin, defending with 14. Oscar Pant sensing this is an opportunity to put this game to bed, good ball, back inside towards the uh, number eight. Still an injury in the backfield. Play continues. Prodro slides away, sidesteps. I think it's a bit of cramp. It has been a, a long afternoon of defending for Bromerdin. Is under pressure. Skullapant sensibly maybe sticking to their strengths, keeping it tight. There's no need to chance their arm if they're out of position. And those big ball carriers winning territory. Oh, fired out good hands to keep that ball alive and in possession. Evan Lomas in support of Oliver Kavanagh, or was it Morgan Prothero? Lewis again, well defended, good jack claim by Guion Jones Howells with an important turnover. And a change for Promer then Thomas Jones leaving the field with Maxen Llewellyn coming on for the final 10 minutes in this year nine. Cup final. Great tackle, must be said by Evan Redding. We haven't seen too much of the Bromer, the number eight, in, a, in an attacking facet of play. But he's kept uh, Harrison Lewis in check. 15 points the difference. Bromer, then needing a score ASAP. Ooh. Yeah, not straight. But we've seen Hungry Kai Howells has uh, gone into the, the hooking position following the injury to Kai Davis. Obviously the first choice uh, hooker. And the uh, throw-ins have been a little wayward, haven't they, for Bromer then. But they've battled away. Slopant with the feed, looking to find some territory 
Jake Davis Barkley pumps it downfield into touch. And it's not a bad touch finder either. So Bromerthin will be in possession again, but 20, 30 metres downfield. And uh, the spring in the Bromerthin step seems to have fizzled out. Kai Howells again struggles with the throw. Wayward, you'd think potentially may make it easier for him with a with a shortened line out. Let's call a Panta preparing their replacement. They're going to bring on the whole bench. Give everybody a turn on. This magnificent pitch in this magnificent arena. Oh, it's a penalty for Bromerdin in the scrum. Yeah, driving in, boring in. Here's the uh, the call. Let's see whether Bromerdin can conjure up a try from somewhere. It starts with uh, Reese here to put it down as far as possible, as close to the uh, corner flag as possible. Oh, they're opting for the scrum. That's a. Uh... A strange decision. Well, it does tie in uh, the forwards, of course. There could be a, a gap somewhere. And that's what uh, Bromerdin are hoping for. Jack Johnson again, possibly out on the uh, on the wing. Yeah, maybe. And maybe considering that they've lost the last two lineouts, that they may not want to put pressure on Kai Howells and his throw. It's a solid platform. Now then, they release the back line. James. Flat pass, spun out towards Johan James, who comes across from the other wing. This James chopped down in midfield. You have to realign. They've lost their ten. Who's going to take charge of the organisation? Keen Turner. Again, solid defending. Yolo Morgan. That's Caleb Morris wearing six. Have a skull of pants stolen it. Yes, they have. It's Harrison Lewis again. It could be an attacking opportunity from turnover ball, but it's knocked on. <laughs> you don't want a big burly forward in the midfield when you've got the a wide open field ahead of you, uh, Owen. Yeah, and when you backtrack and trying to get into position, it's difficult to get those hands out in front. So the changes coming on. Oh, well, that's the best mullet of the day. <laughs> Is there an award? Um, I think we'll have to keep the award until the end of the week. There's so many candidates for the best mullet of the week. Yeah, Archie Hancock wearing 17 for a punt. An injury for Caleb Morris here from uh, Bro Merlin. Or perhaps it's just a uh, uh, cramp. There have been some outstanding performances on uh, on both sides uh, this afternoon, uh, Owen. The tackling has been superb from Bromer. Then looking in particular at uh, Johan James, Thomas Jones at uh, centre as well. And from the uh, Skull Pant perspective, well, you needn't look any further really than, than Reagan Gibbons, despite the fact that uh, Gavin Williams has gone over for two tries. Harrison Lewis obviously has uh, caught the eye. But I think we're in agreement, aren't we, for the yeah, uh, goal so. dot compare player of the match award and he is the man with the <laughs> yellow boots and uh, the yellow headgear crouching down at the side of the scrum here and he is Reagan Gibbons. Yeah you've got to be confident of your ability to be wearing that club but haven't you? One last throw of the dice perhaps for Bromerdin. Yeah we're into the last five minutes Bromerdin. We're gonna have to throw the kitchen sink at this Escola Pant. Defence and errors like that is not going to allow Bromerdin to salvage this cup final. And I think it's the physicality of a school of pants that maybe left the mark on Bromerdin's forward eight.
Yeah, early engagement from both sides. Referee trying to get his clear messages across. It's been a torrid afternoon, hasn't it, for Bromer then in the defensive stakes. They've acquitted themselves well, but uh, they've not been able to deal with the power of Scolopant and the pace, indeed, of uh, Regan Gibbons in particular. Now there's a change for the Skull Bromerdin, who have come down here to the capital once again in numbers after the under 18s team here. Uh, reckon he's a big favourite. He just heard a loud uh, cheer from the Bromerdin contingent for number 17. Griff Jones. And I think that's the first line out they've won. It is just about. In the second half, certainly. Now then. Oh, the gap's there. Good show and goal by his James. Offloads, but it's fumbled forward again. Has it gone forward? The referee has his arm out. So it will be a scum, scrum for a scholar pant. But the pant, even though they've maybe been comfortable for the 40, 50 minutes, they're not had everything their own way. Bromer, they have asked questions. It's just accuracy at those key moments again. Just going missing. I think the referee is looking for a straight shove here. Back, straight backs as well. Slight imbalance in the Bromardin scrum this very minute. That's a good kick downfield, relieving the pressure. Again, Bromardin will be tested in the line. Yeah, Bromer then deserved winners uh, yesterday, of course, over their near neighbours, both uh, schools on the banks of the River Towy. But it flowed a little faster down near the estuary at Lansefan, and Bromer then taking the spoils. Yeah, and Bromer then seemingly going to fall short on this occasion. Knocked on that line out, really struggling, isn't it? After Kai Davis, the regular hooker, departing. Approaching the final minute or so. Pridian James with the feed. Good scrum by Pant is there for James. Popped out. Oh, there's an opportunity. Bit of juggling going on. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure a scream came from a skill of Pant there for the ball. Yeah, just blue on blue, but the wrong, color, the wrong shade of blue, wasn't it? Yes, hoof downfield. And in a jiffy, Bromerdin are back in their own half. And they now know that this game will be up. Combining well there, Reese James at outside half and inside centre, Abel Reese. Not quite pulling it off. The throw in by Evan Redding. Change and throw it. Good hands by Reese James and all sorts of pressure. Abel Reese does well. Dump to the ground in the end. A chip and chase by Reese James sees a gap. But uh, his counterpart in the 10 jersey, Jake Davis Barkley, understands that that is the final play. That is the win. A skull, a pant controlling this year nine cup final from the off the power of the forwards too much to handle for Bro Murthin and by three tries to one a skull pint uh, pant take the spoils a skull Bro Murthin five a skull a pant 20 the scores coming to Gavin Williams with a brace of tries and the player of the match Regan Gibbons with the third score.
with Bromer then try coming to Jack Johnson on the left wing and we can see the goal Doc compare player of the match in the background there having just taken off his flashy yellow head guard yeah, fully deserving of the the win a skull pant from uh, Torba Green or Tonas Kiboriai in, in Welsh of course and have acquitted themselves well and uh, considering of course that they did take part in the Roslyn Park Sevens over the last uh, two days any number of Welsh schools uh, uh, taking part in the Roslyn Park Sevens yeah and uh, Esquilla Pants playing their club rugby in Ponteclean and Ponteclean won or have won the the Blues Cup in the 14s final on uh, the two previous occasions which shows that they're the, uh, a good pool of rugby players in the area at the moment in that age group and they'll be looking to step up to the 16s regional age grade section I'm sure in the next year or two a skull Bromer then gave their best shot but just fell short today some good performances out there they could hold their heads up high. Performances from Rhys James, Jack Johnson, Thomas Jones. Yeah, and uh, Kian Turner as well uh, in the back row. Caleb Morris showed up uh, well. They will, for obvious reasons, they will be disappointed. You do come here to the Principality dreaming of lifting that cup. And... Uh, you're always ill prepared for defeat. But I think the physical stature of some of those, a skull pant forwards, did the damage. Gavin Williams, as we previously mentioned, who unbelievably played on the wing last year, now winning three. And Harrison Lewis, who is a, a giant of a man at this under 14 level. I'm sure a few scouts will be looking at him to develop his physical ability further. And of course, the player of the match, Regan Gibbons. But Jake Davis Barkley played his part at 10, much we said, kicked well. Kept the backs ticking over. Yeah, controlled things well, didn't he? Found his, uh, his touch. Notably, the, uh, the penalty kick that took them to the last uh, try there for uh, Regan Gibbons. And here we are, Skull Bromer then stepping up to receive their runners up medals. And uh, if you haven't heard Simon Edwards whisper a voice in the last 10 15 minutes or so, there he is in the flashy blazer, flashy blazer, well dressed, <laughs> um, presenting those runners, runner up medals. Same one did say it was an iron on uh, badge, though. <laughs> an old school friend of mine in the background there, Lynn Howell. Not sure they're still secretary of the Welsh Schools uh, Rugby Union. I remember talking to Lynn. Uh, a year or two That's ago right. yeah last year last year and i'm sure he said i may, I may have been exaggerating yeah. or, or got the story wrong, that the dewa sheet lived beneath his bed for a while because there was no space to keep it well the year before i mean it, you know it's a very delicate uh, uh, trophy is the dewa shield and uh, when it was presented i said something to the effect that well you should take that to the re repair shop what happened lynn did take it to the repair shop and they did repair it and it came back last year looking pristine sadly of course the dewa Shield was played for back in December uh, of last year, so we denied the uh, opportunity to have a, a look at the Duo Shield. Uh, but it's a prestigious uh, trophy and a prestigious shield that's uh, keenly fought for. And it shows the pathway of maybe the age grade rugby. We've seen the DC Thomas Bowl, Plate, and Cup contested for this morning, which is a, a prestigious uh, event in its. Uh, in itself in terms of the history and the players who have who have played in that cup final over the years and the Dewa Shield 
is exactly the same with some of the best rugby players in Wales having competed for that shield over the years. Well, that's an indication for you, Owen, of uh, the height of uh, Harrison Lewis here. Simon Edwards is standing alongside us, and uh, he's saying was only four foot eight. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I was looking him in the eye. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Harrison Lewis is a, a beast, and he's led a scholar pant to victory. And as we prepare, the photographer putting everybody in their position. And here we are, the winners of the Year 9 Schools Cup Final. A scholar punt from Talbot Green, Ponticlean. Where the winners, Bromerdin, gave a good account for themselves but just fell just short. The final score in this one, a skull Bromer in five, a skull a pant 20. Long work here, the school a pant or tonus gibori, nor any a gustard leath, e a scolion, a drane bluidin now and trechi a school bromer, they know e gain point e bimp game, are their hog a rath and a gabresama are a fourth e stadium a principality. Yeah, a school bromer, they even through the anis, a doi, the skin and brain head you mat, and an for this seed queer or. Gerverdin on the scholar pant Ben Dante and Heather Vidigoli. I thought my young game at Hidod from our stadium Prince Palace round the Vernal Bluidin Deg Vidin Kali Fruitrong a skull pro Morganog are Hulford. So it's going to be half of the West against Pro Morganog in the year 10 Cup final. In Camiveni Mount Savon in Waith Etso. And maybe the kick into Ambim Porglo. Kick off for that one at five o'clock.
We're in fine voice again at the Principality Stadium here in Cardiff for the final match uh, of the day here. It's the Welsh Senior uh, School Rugby Union Intermediate Group Year 10 Cup Final. And it again is West against East, Haverford West against uh, Bro Morganog. And uh, Bro Morganog, well, they've been here before two years ago when they won the Year 8 Final. Uh, that is the trophy that they're vying for. Cwys yn ôl i chi stadiwm y Principality ar gyfer gêm ôl ar dydd rhwng Ysgol Iwchradd Hulffwrdd a Bro Morganwg. Tîm Hulffwrdd, the Havard West side, Rhys Lewis, Finn Bruins, Josh Slater, Braden Jones, Manny Davis, and second row, Ewan Griffiths, Harvey Thomas, and Kaya Jones complete the back row. And behind the scrum, we have Connor Wesley, Niall Smith, Lucas O'Brien, Ollie Thompson, Jake John, and Ewan Owen on either side of Yestin Preddy. And there is uh, quite a few players on the bench, including Tristan George, Malachi John, Maxim Svets, Lloyd Jenkins, Alfie Squelch, David Williams and Kai Kendrick. And they will try and keep up with the, the others, as I'm sure they will come onto the pitch before the end of this crucial match. A skull bro Morganog from the Vale of Glamorgan. Ocean Leek, Jensen Wilding Harris, Evan Kennedy in the front row. Evan Mitchell, Liam Williams, Freddie Easterby, Charlie Williams and Owen Wheel complete the back row and the flyers behind the scrum while well, Owen Lewis is at scrum half Reese Muxworthy the fly half Jack Evans and Richie Jenkins the centers Evan Weeks at fullback Tristan Coates and Thomas Powell the wing three quarters and on their bench we have Dylan Reese, Maxine Williams, Ocean Govia, Bryn Wilton, Griff Jones, Kai Williams, Jack Williams and Caleb Smith, the Skullbro Morganog, the Welsh medium comprehensive in the Vale of Glamorgan on the outskirts of Barry and have a west world right down there in the west of Wales and we've already seen the banners, west is best, I wonder, they come here with uh, high praise indeed, Simon Edwards from the Cardiff schools, you've seen these two teams play and you suggest to me beforehand that uh, it might be a closer encounter than, uh, than we, 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 we think. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this game. Um, there were two really high-quality semi-finals. Eskol Bromorganog played against Dufrin Aman in a really good um, close match. Um, lots of um, twos and fros. And then Haverford West beat Tonner Evile in a really competitive semi-final as well. So a lot to look forward to in this game. And last year's finalist, Paul Cowell and uh, uh, Dinevor, Erdan Aman, Dufrin Aman, were beaten by these two teams on the way to the finals yeah, with Og as well. Correct, yeah. Bromorganog beat Dufferin Aman in the semis, but Haverford West, they had a really tough draw. They had Porth Cowell in the first round of the competition and they won 16 14 in a real tough game. And uh, all the other teams were, were, were really happy to see two strong teams playing against each other in the first round. But yeah, this looks really promising to be a good game. Well, it'd be interesting. Esco Bromorgano were here two years ago and they defeated Penwethig by 38 to 17, I think it was. So they've matured, obviously. Uh, so, Hanford West, well, they are the dark horses. Yeah, I think from what I saw in the semi-finals, they've got some really influential players in the team. Harvey Thomas, the number eight, is, is a player really to look out for. Niall Smith, the outside half. And Kyle Jones has um, put in some really impressive performances this season as well. So here we go then. We wait for the uh, two teams to appear from the tunnel on the far side of the field. Huge anticipation for this one. Good support for both the both sides in the east stand as the sun sets on the Principality Stadium. The last match of today. Uh, it's been a high class uh, quality day of rugby here in uh, Cardiff. A purposeful walk onto the field. Scott Bro Morganog in the blue strip on the left and Haverford West High School on the right to huge applause and cheers from the stand. Uh, it's such a great occasion for the young lads coming out. You, you can never under underestimate what a big thing this is for the lads. They're all like about 14, 15 years old, and this is probably the highlight of their rugby careers to date. So um, best of luck to both teams, and I'm really looking forward to this one. Well, you certainly are. Rodri Webster is the uh, referee for this match.
It'll be Haverford West High School to kick off then. The final match of the day, the Welsh School Rugby Union Intermediate Group here, 10 Cup final. And the referee right on the spot and spotting the, uh, the early knock on, the early nerves. And uh, a promising platform here for the uh, West Whalen outfit. I'd say that Haverford West will really relish this with a with a powerful number eight at the base, not too far out. It could be a, a pick and go to go blind. And huge front row fo uh, forward lineup in Finn Bruin, Reese Lewis, and Josh Slater. But it's a, a great shove from Bro Morgano, causing all sorts of problems uh, for Haverford West. But they somehow managed to dig it out through Connor Wesley. Well, it's even Stevens in the error stakes at the moment. The mistake apiece. Now, Bro Morgano could be really happy with that first scrum there. Like, the low, I don't know what's happened, maybe a bit of back chat. And a tackle, the tip tackle by the looks of it, uh, judging by the, uh, by the gestures of the referee. Now then, let's see. Good work, bringing in Harvey Thomas, the athletic. Number eight from Haverford West High School. Out it comes. Bro Morgano got there in numbers to prevent anything from developing. It's there on a plate for Wesley again, looking for the opening score, which might come. But again, look how many blue shirts there are crowding around the, uh, the tackle area. Reese Lewis. That's a great drive from the Haverford West hooker. Ball bobbling in the air and looking to the wide open side. Do they have the runners again? Bro Morgano have it covered here. So Bro Morgano weathering the storm, and this time it will be a scrum for Bro Morgano. So the Bro Morgano defense tested, and they're not fine wanting. Yeah, let's see if Pro Morgano can get the same platform as they did from the last scrum so they can exit out the 22. Well, you mentioned uh, that I should look out for Harvey Thomas. Last man down, that's the base of the Harvard West High School scrum, wearing the blue scrum cap number eight. He do certainly does look uh, the part, isn't he? An athlete, as you say, a pentathlete. To the wide open spaces uh, from the outside half, Reese Muxworthy. The chase is good. But he bobbles up into the hands of the Haverford West fullback, Yestin Preddy. Takes play almost to the uh, Bromorganog 22. Well, it's a solid tackle. Well, that must have been a close call. Quiet word then, the ocean leak with the, the tackle, robust tackle. So half for the West will take a pot the po uh, pop of the post here. Well, there's all encompassing tackle to my mind. There's nothing wrong with it, but then again, I'm in the comfort of the commentary position. So Niall Smith will attempt this penalty from 35 metres or so with the angle. And Deathly Hush transcends the Principality Stadium. Smith, has he got it? Yes, he has. The opening score then goes the way of the West Walians. The pressure in the opening minutes from the Haverford West to High School. And they take the lead. Courtesy of that Niall Smith penalty goal from way out, struck it cleanly and still climbing as it went over the post. Three points to nil then in favour of Haverford West High School. I think the warning signs are there, aren't they, for Bromorgano? They won't want to give any penalties away in their half against this kicker. No, Bromorgano know that they can't uh, transgress in their own half. 
because Niall Smith, as he has shown, has got a, a pretty good boot on him. Advantage, Bro Morganog. Spun out to uh, Muxworthy, the kick over the top again, and that's meant for Thomas Powell. The bounce is kind, there could be a score here, or oh, fumbled. White line fever, perhaps, although you don't like to say that it was white line fever, but uh, in all honesty, perhaps should have done a little better. Nice kick across field from Muxworthy. It's a wicked bounce, it has to be said. So knocked forward. And Hubford West on the defensive, some eight metres out from their own try line. Quick chat with the uh, two opposing front rows. Ocean Leek, Jensen, Wilding, Harris, Evan Kennedy for Bro Morganog, Finn Bruins, Reese Lewis, Josh Slater for Haverford West. Feeding the scrum. That's uh, Connor Wesley. Harry Thomas grabbed by the ankle, and Bro Morganog would appear to have turned it over. Now then, let's see what uh, Haverford West can do on, in defence. Penalty quickly taken. Out it goes, and snapped up there by the number 22, Jack Evans, and gives Bromorganog the lead from the scrum. Yeah, I think it was Owen Lewis, the scrum half, was putting Connor Wellesley under a lot of pressure at that scrum. And then the sharp mind to take the quick penalty as well. Yeah, Thomas caught in possession and threw very quickly was Freddie Easterby with the scrum cap and the penalty. And the long outstretched arms of Jack Evans snatched the ball from the air and over he goes. That's a sweet conversion attempt but not quite on the mark. The flag stay down. So it stays at five points to three in favour of Eskol Bro Morganog. Change of direction from Niall Smith. Kicks deep. Muxworthy is back there. Picks his spot. Almost up to halfway. Good exit from the Bro Morganog outside half. Yeah, he looks quite a composed 10, doesn't he? Like, he's, he's really calm. He's, he's put in a few nice kicks and a few confident passes. The referee will give uh, Harvard West the hurry up here, surely. Late into the line out. Snatched again by uh, Bro Morganog under the eyes of the uh, tall, lanky Harvey Thomas. He's there on a plate, barreling forward. Bro Morganog's used to be penalised for holding on to the ball on the ground. And we've seen that so many times this week, and uh, the referees are pretty vigilant on that aspect of play. West not uh, finding touch. Good pressure being applied here. But the Romogano there in numbers. Muxworthy again. Looking for Thomas Powell. He managed to keep the ball in play. So both sides tested here early on. Nothing much to choose between them. 
No, but you can see um, Bromwell Gannug's intent to play. They're looking for the cross-field kick. They're looking at the quick penalties, and they're looking to keep the tempo high and maybe run this big Haverford West pack around a little bit. Needs to be again. Luxworthy looks for and gets support from Owen Wheel this time, the uh, Bromwell Gannug number six. Looking to get the ball away quickly. That was Owen Lewis, scrum half, up from fullback, that's seven weeks. Almost up to the uh, Halford West uh, 10 metre line, good angle. Looks with you again, spots a half chance perhaps on the narrow side, but Halford West have it well covered, and they bundle the ball carrier into touch. It'll be time out for a for an injury here. So ball stolen, a ball not going to the the jumper needs to be wide awake to the opportunity to a half chance perhaps of uh, getting his team on the front foot. Yeah, um, Fred Easterby's had his name mentioned a few times already in this game, hasn't he? He's, he's looking to be a bit of a nuisance at the back of the line out. Uh, he's, he's got his hands in the ruck. He's, he's kind of affecting the game in a positive way for Brom, Brom Organog. See, we had the situation with the semi-final where I, I understand that Freddie's dad had been um, helping coach the Brom Organog team at, um, with a few sessions. And we had Shane Williams' son on the Dufferin Aman team as well. So they had some good quality coaching to add to their teachers. I dare say Sarah will be uh, making the sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't forgive me unless I mentioned her. <laughs> on the charge, that is Bro Morganog. Almost finding the gap. Now is Liam Williams, the uh, young man wearing 18 on his back. Socks down around his ankles. Right on the uh, five meter line there. Yeah, let me get at him. Looking to get away from the attentions uh, of the uh, oncoming Bromorganog uh, defenders it was uh, Niall Smith. Oh, well played. It would be Braden Jones, the uh, prop for Hufford West, wearing number 17. When you think of props and you think of Haverford West, you uh, think of Rob Evans and latterly, of course, Kemsley Mathias, who has recently won uh, his international cap uh, for Wales, making uh, inroads. And obviously, there was a Bromor Ganog former pupil here only last week, making a big impact. Mason Grady playing well, well for Wales last week. Indeed, and proud of his uh, association with the score Bromor Ganog, Mason Grady. Good solid scrum from Brom Organog. Taken up by the try scorer. That's uh, Evans, Jack Evans. Ball a little slow coming back on that occasion. Halford West player got a hand to it. But illegally done. Offside, says the referee. So Muxworthy. Kick for territory here. And kick for position. Oh, close, going to get it to the corner flag. It's safe into touch. Great atmosphere here at the uh, Principality Stadium, as it has been all day. It's always the case that one set of supporters go home happy, and the others, well, slightly. Less happy, we shall say, if not despondent. But a good crowd of uh, teachers, uh, fellow pupils, and uh, family as well. Rumbling forward. Had to be a penalty. They're not releasing. Yeah, Manny Davis with a, with a really important turn over there. Safely into touch. Yeah, 
immediately getting his hands on the ball, not going beyond the ball. Manny Davis. Uh, judge not straight. So for Morgano, will get the option. Scrum more line out. It's going to be a scrum. Yeah, very wisely, Bro Morgano tying up eight uh, half for the West forwards. So there should be room somewhere for the, uh, the exciting Bro Morgano backs to uh, to probe the half for the West defence. Punch a hole, lying back deep. Back beyond the halfway is Thomas Powell, the right wing for Bro Morgano. It's on its way. Not cleanly. So clearing up is Evan Weeks. Muxworthy did well. Up to the Haverford West 22. Charlie Williams driving hard towards the Haverford West try line. Not getting much change though from the. Uh, West Wallian defence has fallen awkwardly, perhaps. Determined run from Charlie Williams there. Yeah, real purposeful, purposeful, powerful run. Fair play, he spotted the gap, didn't he, in the, in the defence? Yeah, rolling forward and maybe, yeah, fell on his elbow, I think it was. Fell hard. Just five points to three, just the one try. Yeah, good to see Charlie Williams getting back up on his feet. Be a defensive scrum for Haverford West. Some 10 meters out from their own try line, some 8 meters in from touch. Solid scrummaging, Thomas. Not wanting to give a bad ball back to his scrum half, but that could drop anywhere. But it's dropped right into the hands of the uh, flying Tristan Coates for Bro Morgano. And the gap is there again for Evans. That's the second try for the Eskol Bro Morgano centre. Well taken try. And as you alluded to earlier, Simon, this team, they love to run the ball. Oh, they're always looking at the ball in the open spaces. But again, it's a try that's come from the defensive pressure from Bromorganog. It's putting the half-backs under a lot of pressure, forcing the mistake, and then taking advantage of it. Yes, yeah, a wayward kick. It has led to that second try for Bromorganog and for Jack Evans. Word perhaps for the water carrier here, Simon. Uh, one of the, of the gang, one of the the team yeah exactly just um showing how important it is to be part of the squad i know um the the water carrier there um evan, oh, Vaughan, evan Vaughan. um uh, suffered a bit of an injury he's a very promising young player evan Vaughan. Um, uh, his teachers have a lot of time for him uh, have a high opinion of him and it's great to see him even though he's not able to play today contributing to the squad Oh, that was a nice offload, wasn't it, uh, from uh, Tristan Coates. The link play and uh, the finish equally good from uh, Jack Evans. So the, con the try goes unconverted. Reese Muxwell is a great effort from the uh, Bromorganog fly half. Still a converted try, just the one score separating the teams. Yeah, Reese Muxwell is one of these... Um very talented sports people. He, he also plays cricket for for the region, South Wales region. So you can tell he's one of these multi-sport people. Great hand-eye coordination. Yes, we already see that in evidence, haven't we, in the opening uh, quarter. 30 minutes each way.
See the Brom Organo coaches, um, Mr. Dewey Edwards, Mr. Rhys Bainon and Sean Davis looking very happy with how things are going so far. Brom Organo securing possession, Scruffy line out. Richie Jenkins with the headgear. Slight delay for the try scorer to uh, lace his boots. Yeah, we've mentioned Charlie Williams a couple of times already, I think, today. And um, his dad is um, Paul Williams, who used to be the outside half for Neath and Whale Sevens back in the day. Yeah, plenty of pedigree in uh, the Scott Bromorgano lineup. It's a great effort from uh, Niall Smith. And, uh, every time the Huffington West boys get the uh, ball in their hands, there's a huge roar, a huge cheer going up from the uh, East Stand. Advantage to the West Walians. Need to keep hold of the ball here. Into the Bromorgano uh, half. The referee's arm is outstretched. Advantage to uh, Haverford West as they probe uh, the narrow side through Ewan Griffiths. But snatch out of the air though by uh, Liam Williams, I think it is. So no advantage. And the referee will call them back. He looks the part, doesn't he? Does uh, Niall Smith, the outside half. So the restart from uh, the goal line. Ball didn't go forward. Thomas on the charge, evades the first tackle, takes the second from uh, Jake Evans, who's in good strength here. Need the scrum half, finally arrives. Round the back it goes. Out from Niall Smith. Over the head of, uh, I think it was the fullback. And that's given a half chance to uh, Bromer Ganluk, but again the referee spots an infringement. And will call them all the way back. It was one of those, the outer half had nothing to lose with a cross-field kick there, so he thought he'd give it a go, knowing he had the penalty. So what's on the cards here for Haverford West to Reese Lewis on the wall? Looking for the runners, looking for Harvey Thomas perhaps in particular. Not yet. Uh, could be on blind here. There's, there's numbers for them. Thomas, there he goes. Can he get there almost to the try line? Reaching out and the score has been allowed. Harvey Thomas then brings Haverford West back within two points to the conversion to come. Well worked try from Haverford West from the uh, the tap and go initially. So out of the hand twice in. The well, there's yeah, some glimpses of uh, Harvey Thomas, and this was the try eventually wrestling the ball clear, just about managing to get his fingertips over the try line. So this then, to draw level, Niall Smith, he's about 12 metres in from touch and a metre outside the 22. That's a well struck oh, conversion kick. attempt. Kick. Exceptional kick from the outside half and that brings the scores level at 10 points all. True to your word, Simon, it couldn't be closer. No, it's a cracking game, it's, it's a game I've been looking forward to all week and it's living up to all expectation. 
was a great finish by Harvey Thomas. Fair play, he had loads of work to do. Just a reminder that we are looking for the go.compare player of the match. And there will be candidates on both sides, that's for sure. Two tries for Jack Evans in the uh, blue strip of Bromorganog. Harvey Thomas has shown up well for Hubbard West, but it's uh, early days yet. As Weeks sets off, offloads. Charlie Williams can't quite gather. Liam Williams does. Oh, we know this is definitely in range for the for the Haverford West outside half, Niall Smith. And it's not often you say it at this stage, but when you're in the opposition half and an opportunity to score, you've got to take the points because it's it's so tight. Oh, definitely. Both defences look really strong. It's going to take some really good attacking play to break any of them down, and we've we've been lucky to see a couple of tries so far. So Wood. A stern word to both captains. Right, what are we going to do here? Smith has the ball tucked under his uh, left elbow. Let's have a go. So in midfield, probably about 32 meters out perhaps midway between the 22 and the 10 meter line of Pro Morganog. right footed kicker got a power behind the boot as well and takes Haverford West into the lead for the second time in this match and by uh, 13 points to 10 Yeah, a bit of information from uh, Mike Jones, a Haverford West um, teacher. And Niall Smith has been um, voted man of the match by the boys for every game in the Welsh Cup so far this year. Thomas hacks it downfield for all he's worth. Muxworthy has a quick look and see what's possible. Where, where are the Bromorgano players? Over on the narrow side. Ball coughed up, though. Possession back in the uh, hands of Haverford West and their hooker, Rhys Lewis. Slowly into the line-out. Braden Jones just reminds the, the hooker and captain, Rhys Lewis, where he wants the ball. And... It's delivered exactly where it was needed. Ewan Griffiths. Connor Wesley waits, gets his hands on the ball. Slowly but surely, the uh, Haverford West backs creeping up. Smith thinking about the kick, perhaps surveys the first tackle. Grabbed around the ankles by Charlie Williams. The ball is still there, though, for the West Wallians. On the narrow side, over the shoulder from Wesley, the scrum half. Almost into the hands of uh, Jake John. On the right wing. Intelligent play here by Halford West. But look at this break. That was so close. Referee looking at his watch. 30 minutes each way. Closing in on half time. Albert West getting the drive on. Muxworthy delivers into the hands of uh, Jake Evans. Around the ankles. And uh, Tristan Courts couldn't quite get away. Muxworthy again. Asking questions on the uh, Haverford West defence. He was offside in any event. Another good carry by Charlie Williams. Wait, and again, it's Brom Organog just trying to up the tempo all the time, trying to run these lads around the park. Doing well, that's Liam Williams. 
seen one or two thrust from him again Muxworthy desperately wanting to get Thomas Powell away <laughs> too close to the touchline unfortunately but you still think that a try might come his way it's clearly he's got pace yeah, he did really really well they did um, uh, the winger Thomas Powell to catch the ball there So we're into the final minute of the uh, opening 30. Muxworthy again looking for the wing three-quarter out wide. There's a fair bit of green beyond the, uh, the touchline. It can confuse some players if they've not been here before. Lobbed into midfield. Hover for the West are there in numbers and get the ball back safely into the hands of Niall Smith, a change of direction. Pass forward, unfortunately. You could see what he was trying to do. And that is the whistle for half time. And not a bad half of rugby, I would suggest, Simon. We've had uh, three tries. Two for Bromorgano, courtesy of uh, Jack Evans, and then that uh, individual effort uh, from Harvey Thomas. Yeah, I, think, to 10. I think both sets of coaches are going to be really happy with what they've seen so far. Both teams are definitely still in this game and there's a lot to play for in the second half. So competitive opening 30 sees Haverford West go into the second half with a slender three-point advantage, 13 points to 10 as uh, Freddie Easterby tightens uh, his grip on the uh, on the headgear. So 30 minutes to decide the outcome of this. Well, Schools Rugby Union Intermediate Group Year 10. That's under 16s, probably, uh, in terms of age group. Yeah, the und under 15s, these boys are, yeah. My goodness. Some solid specimens out there for 15s and under. So 
The first possession goes the way of Haverford West, or does it? Penalty. Yeah, so a lot of these boys will be playing for the Jewish Shield next year. The the, the Jewish Shield moved to under-16s this season. So um, I'm sure uh, the Vale boys and the Pembrokeshire boys will, will, will be having their eyes on that on that massive um, shield of ours. Yes, which has been well repaired. We've already referred to it. Uh, Lynn Howell, my old uh, schoolmate, was in charge of that. And uh, I suggested two years ago that it needed to go to the repair shop because it looked... Uh, pretty ropey at the time and indeed uh, he says he took, he took me at my word and they did a fine job so Reese Lewis to feed the Halford West line out cleanly taken swiftly on in midfield to Kyo Jones who's had a fairly quiet uh, opening 30 looking to explode into the second half with decoy runners Thomas no disguising his barnstorming run out on the left. The ball is there, but Gro Morgano driving forward for all they're worth, making it difficult for Haverford West to get the ball away. Now they've secured possession. So out it comes on the narrow side. Thomas probing, gets support. I think he's won a penalty for Haverford West as well. Over the shoulder it goes, a testing kick. They'll come back for the penalty in Leicester's distinct advantage and giving chase. So that's uh, Ewan Owen, the uh, left wing for Haverford West. Didn't quite come off. The uh, idea was good. The kick over the top, the speculative kick. So they come back for the original penalty for offside. Yeah, Harvey Thomas has had such a big impact on the game, hasn't he? He's, he's such an athletic number eight. We've been really lucky over the last few years with some young number eights, Morgan Morse coming through and, and being being really influential. And you're talking about we've had a big tradition, boys like Andrew Grabham, who used to teach in Bromorgano back in my day, was a was a fantastic number eight. A former glance half boy. Wicked bouncing ball now then. Have a for West, have it from the line out, and this is Kayo Jones setting off, laying the platform. Narrow side once more. Thomas takes it almost to the try line, five meters short, four meters now, perhaps. Dug out, and this is the captain, Reese Lewis. Over he goes. The referee right on the spot, arm in the air. And the captain extends Haverford West's lead to eight points. No try. Oh, double movement. Cruel luck. So a let off then for Bro Morganog. Well, this is brave. Muxworthy. Problems here for Bro Morganog. Outside half, stuck under a pile of bodies. Who's going to take the relieving kick? It falls to Owen Lewis. Midfield. Now then, options left and right for Smith. He's got Thomas in support. Might not need him. Breaks one tackle, two tackles. In the shadow of the Bromorgano posts. And the boys in blue are in very quickly to snaffle that ball. And again, ah, the error. It has to be taken from the mark. This time, Muxworthy will go for a touch from midfield. Just about gets the ball over the sideline. Good work by Smith here. Yeah. Great footwork.
Ball swept into midfield. Sit down, says uh, Liam Williams. I'm coming through. Lovely pass from Lewis, the scrum half. Muxworthy floats out the pass to the left winger with room to run, Tristan Coates. Muxworthy leaves it for one wheel. So a chance here for Bro Morganog. The ball is spilt and yet another penalty. A scrum perhaps. Yeah, Caio Jones is the man injured, holding his elbow here. So ball just lost forward and a chance then for Bro Morganug. Some 15 meters out and some confusion over the uh, numbers in the Halford West High School side. We'll try and uh, keep up when we get clarification. Round the corner, Lewis with a pass. To the right winger, Thomas Powell, will he get his reward at last? Looks as if he has the referee's assistant on the far side. Points to the fact that he did get the ball down and Bro Morgano got back into the lead. Darting from the base of the scrum, that was Owen Lewis, the uh, scrum half, and uh, the short pass to Thomas Powell, and had the uh, the pace and the strength to go over in the corner. Mixworthy sees his uh, conversion attempt to drift uh, to the right of the upright, so the score remains the two-point gap, 13 for Halford West, 15 for Bro Morganog, and this is the try again. Desperate defence from Halford West. Muxworthy scans downfield. Oh, the bounce, it's a wicked bounce. It's uh, snapped up, lost forward, play on, says uh, the referee. Thomas is there. Should have been Hoverford West ball, but uh, it's been reclaimed by Bro Morganu, full of running at the moment, looking for a hat trick. That's uh, Jack Evans. Almost pulled to ground and almost up to the uh, Haverford West to 22. He's stepping nice offload to Owen Lewis. Bro Morgano rolling forward slowly but surely out to, to uh, the centre, Richie Jenkins. Lewis Muxworthy, just a pop up pass to the lock forward. Evan Mitchell, it's all gone wrong. He will get the advantage of the boys in blue. Williams, Liam Williams, that is a solid tackle from uh, Kayo Jones. The pressure still on the uh, Haverford West try line. 
The next to score could well be crucial here. And here comes the uh, fullback, or Richie Jenkins, rather, the centre. How would you believe it? Any number of high tackles being uh, penalised by the referee. Some warnings have been given. Look at this from uh, Freddie Easterby, the underhanded offload to Owen Lewis, the scrum half. So close and yet uh, so far. Well, it's a pulsating affair, Simon, and that's for sure. Can't take your eyes off this game for a second. No, it's an absolute cracker. And you you always kind of have that moment of a worry when you see a player lying down for a little while. You kind of go, hopefully it's nothing nothing too bad. No no, no bad knee injuries or anything like that. So it's good to see East to be back up on his feet. So Thomas, tight angle. It takes play almost up to uh, his own 22. Yeah, Thomas taking the kick because it's uh, the outside half. Neil Smith was uh, receiving treatment to his wrist or forearm behind his own goal line. Taken cleanly by Thomas. Kaya Jones bursting through. Almost managed to keep the ball in play, but under pressure. Yeah, good defence. Support. Good defence by Oshan Leek there, pu pushing him out into touch. And a shake of the hand there from uh, probably his bestie, Tristan Coates. Mcsworthy to Evans, spots a half gap. Not quite getting the ball into the hands, the passing not quite as slick as they would want it to be. So Kyle Jones was injured uh, earlier on, gives way. And wearing number 18, that's Maxime Schwetz. 16. So early engagement can't kick directly for touch. Sky high, well taken by Liam Williams. What a tackle that was from uh, Harvey Thomas. Evans thinking about that hat trick. You'll have to think again. Very impressed with the standard of tackling, uh, Simon. Ah, yeah, I think that the, there's so, there's so many positive aspects as play there, isn't it? The, the, there's the the different variety on the kick there with a bit of a spiral bomb there, the chase, the great tackle, the great offload, and then the carry there by Jack Evans. So good rugby all around. And here we go again. Oh, well taken by Easterby. Again, one-handed back inside. All the skills, Muxworthy missing out Jack Evans. That's Richie Jenkins looking for Powell again. Powell looking for his second try, perhaps, but it was Weeks who came up from fullback. Pass slightly forward. All the pressure on the Haverford West try line. And they've been camped here for quite a while. Not yeah. much in it, but it's the uh, referee's assistant on the far side with the eagle eyes. Pressure being applied. Good pressure. Freddie Easterby quickly on uh, his opposite number. Was the ball carried over? Never mind that. Yeah, slipping his binding. So a chance for a relieving kick. Oh, 
it's safely into touch not the distance perhaps that Haverford West would have wanted but again it's Niall Smith in some difficulty here not taking the kick safely claimed by the West Walians driving forward Testing kick. Now then, where's the bounce? Muxworthy gathers, offloads Jenkins. Taken though by number 14, Thompson. Uh, Coates has looked really dangerous every time he's had the ball. He's, he's carried really hard. Even when it looks like he's going through traffic, he still makes those yards. So this time there's a big back row forward uh, linking up with his outside backs, Powell. One try to his name already. Digging deep, that's Lewis. Quickly into the hands of Charlie Williams. Muxworthy. Thomas just about manages to keep the ball in play and secures possession for his team. Wesley, the scrum half. Straight down the throat of Evan Weeks. Leaves it for Powell to have a run. Evans, Muxworthy again, <laughs> the little kick over the top. Yeah, still plenty of time, no heroics here. Under pressure. Another conflap here between the uh, referee and the captains. Now he's asked both captains to have a word with uh, their respective teams. Not party to what was said, but clearly the referee is not quite happy with... Uh, well, not quite happy, he's distinctly not happy. Otherwise you wouldn't have called the captains together. Could be a fair bit of shouting perhaps. Calm is restored. It's still a two-point game. And we've seen these games go right down to the wire, haven't we, Simon? Yeah, this one's still up there for either team. All it'll take is one moment of genius or one, one mistake from somebody and it could cost the game. Right, let's get it sorted. there oh well charged down by Lewis danger here for Hoverford West have they got away with it in go Bro Morgano no Smith restored the support from his captain Reese Lewis Schwetz the replacement Oh, but it's lost and claimed and by Liam, Liam, Williams. Liam Williams. Sets off. Charging for the uh, Haverford West uh, try line. Ginger here again for the West Walians. Muxworthy. The ball sticks like glue to the hands of Charlie Williams. And Bromorganog have the runners out wide. There's a gap opening up for Muxworthy. Cuts back on the angle. Neatly done by the outside half. Get out of my way, says Charlie Williams. Almost to the try line. Uh, the referee has spotted another infringement. Liam Williams has been a right handful, hasn't he? He's carried really hard. It's just another example of, of just like picking up, looking at the gap and just carrying on through. He's been everywhere, hasn't he? He's fo he follows the ball. Mm. A little bit of cramp setting in and that's no surprise. Uh, 
Actually, one Griffiths, I think, the uh, Haverford West number six. Just stretching his calf muscles. Bromorganog then looking to uh, seal it here, possibly with uh, another try. Evans, Weeks. Oh, God, just about. No, no, says the referee. Forward pass, or was it? Yeah, looks like it. Frustration writ large on the faces of the Bromo Ganug players. Just that final pass. But again, credit to the referee's assistant on the near side. The drive coming on, being applied by uh, Bro Morganug. Thomas just about uh, recovers. Oh, that's great work out of defence by Lucas O'Brien. Brilliant work by the centre, great pick-up. And here come Hanford West. Looking for a score that will restore the lead to them, Ewan Griffiths to the captain, Rhys Lewis, and suddenly Haverford West are full of running and it's backs to the wall stuff from Bromorganog, they win the penalty great, great work by Bromorganog there to get the penalty there and they're off again Bromorganog going with, is that Liam Williams again with the carry? Yes, yeah, the thorn in the side of the Haverford West uh, team isn't it, it's Liam Williams Muxworthy, lovely work, lovely hands to Charlie Williams on the inside Sweats wrapping up the uh, Bromorganog outside half high tackle says the referee, and away goes Charlie Williams no hang on <laughs> oh the referee's got in the way this time might have played advantage there, unless there was a, an infringement that I didn't spot Charlie Williams thought he was clear. Good touch finder. Let's have a look at this, Simon. Yeah, Lucas O'Brien there made, made some really good yards. He's really brave going from behind his own try line. And the way he links here, getting the other lads involved, great pick up there by the outer half. Taken in by uh, Liam Williams. Freddie used to be with the, the pass. It didn't go to the hands. So it spilt forward. The mistakes creeping in, and uh, that's no surprise, really, Simon. It's been played at quite a pace, hasn't it, this match? Yeah, no surprise. I think seven minutes-ish on the clock to go. And the boys have put in such a massive shift. They haven't stopped running. It's a big pitch, and the boys have given everything so far. So, yeah, everything's still in it. And other than that... Uh, into a breakthrough from uh, Haverford West a few minutes ago. They've been camped in their own half. They could really do with a solid scrimmage here. And we do get it. Thompson, Thomas rather. Smith, and in from the right wing. And again, the ball is spilt. Looks where he tries to get a boot to it and hack it downfield. Lost forward initially by Haverford West. So it'll be a, a Bromorganug put in.
Neat little pass there from uh, Evan Weeks. And adding his, uh, his elbow to the, uh, to the cause. Liam Williams again. The wrecking ball that he is. And Bro Morgano once again in the hunt. And this time it's Freddy Easterby. And that could well seal it for Askol Bro Morgano. Takes the gap out to seven points with a conversion to come. Popping up like a rabbit from a hole. But the initial break, the initial thrust, though, Simon, from this man. And we are looking for the uh, go.com pair player of the match. And certainly he is uh, somewhere in amongst them. Uh, certainly he's been a real ball carrying threat all afternoon. Muxworthy to make it a two score game uh, off the post and back into the field of play so it's not over yet So can Haverford West conjure up a score with less than five minutes to go? Not the best of kicks, perhaps, from uh, Niall Smith. That's better from Muxworthy. Smith gathers, sets off. And puts it out on the... Uh, almost up to the 22 Smith, just holding his lower left leg. He's in a bit of difficulty here is the uh, Haverford West outside half. This is the best position so far for... Uh, for his team and feeling it at the moment but it's going to be a Bro Morgano line out will they compete what's that man Liam Williams again down the front this time Jack Evans two tries in the first half Muxworthy spinning out the pass to Evan Weeks it's a provocative little kick did it come forward, go forward? No, the referee's assistant on the spot. Desperate play here now from uh, Havre of the West, but the Bromorgano in fine fettle that it's unfairly done. So the kick. And this man, Lucas Davis O'Brien, let's get it right this time. It's David Williams wearing 12, who we've been complimenting as Lucas O'Brien early on. So the kick takes play into the uh, Bromorgano half between the 10 meter line and the 22. The throwing has to be accurate. Slow and late into the line out. Hoisted high. Now then it's on its way. Davis O'Brien takes the hit. It's another penalty. Patience is what's required now. Accuracy as well. There is O'Brien. Well, it's clear that uh, Niall Smith is in some difficulty. Otherwise, he would have taken that uh, that kick. So another line out for Reese Lewis to find his man. Thomas takes it down the front into the hands of his scrum half corner Wesley to uh, David Williams. Nice offload to Davis O'Brien. Now then, could be something on here for Haverford West. It might be the last throw of the dice for the West Walians. The need to recycle quickly. It's there for Wesley. Out it goes. A little feign there from uh, Ewan Griffiths the flank forward but it's lost it's stolen but they have it back again now then play broken up and Hubbard West have got the men here's the fullback going for the try line held up by Evan Weeks good work by the uh, Bro Morgano defender advantage Hubbard West 
The forwards take it up again through Braden Jones to use all his weight and power and strength. Five metres short. Dug out by Connor Wesley around the narrow side. The captain, Rhys Lewis, driving for the line. And he's over. Denied earlier on. It's a captain's drive for Rhys Lewis. Come on, he says. But now then, where's the kicker? Who is the kicker? Who wants the kick? Uh, it's a tough To draw kick. the game, and if it's drawn, there won't be extra time. The cup will be shared. We've been here before, and here we are again. Looks like there's a conversation going on. So it's Lucas Davis O'Brien, assuming that he is wearing 13, is going to take the kick. Oh, no. Or perhaps not. Niall, Niall Smith. Smith. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a sure, an assured kicker. We've seen that already, but what a moment for the Haverford West outside half, who's uh, opted out of the kicking duties for touch. It's high, but it's wide of the mark. So it remains a two-point game then. 20 points to 18, but the final no, whistle has been blown. Heartbreak for Haverford West right at the death. Brilliant score for the captain, but it's going to be Eskol Bromorganog who take home the Welsh Schools Rugby Union Intermediate Group Cup Final. What a game we've had, and we're looking, Simon, for player of the match. Well, it usually goes with the victorious team, and I know, I think I know, where you're going to place your bet here. Yeah, I think it could have gone to uh, any of the players. The, uh, there was a few strong candidates on the Haverford West team. Harvey Thomas, Niall Smith played really well. And on the Bromorganog side, I was really impressed with um, Reese Muxworthy. Both wingers looked really sharp. Jack Evans, obviously, with his couple of tries. But I think man of the match for his impact with his ball carrying is number 18, Liam Williams. There we go. That's your Go.Compare Player of the Match award in this cup final. A worthy winner, it's Liam Williams, the number 18 for Ascol Bromorganog. Commiserations to Haverford West. They fought valiantly but just couldn't get out of their own half in that uh, second period. Number 18, Liam Williams. I wonder whether they've just heard. Mate, you're the man of the match. Wow. <laughs> Great game. And it's finished. Haverford West High School, 18. A skull bro Morganog, 20. At under 15's level. Year 10. My word, we've got some talent on Green Wales at the moment. They came with such high hopes up from the far west. West is best. We saw the uh, the banners in the stand. Not quite the best, and certainly not second best either. Uh, these boys needn't lose any sleep. They've contributed to a fantastic match, but on the day, Scott Bromorgano had that a little bit extra. So let's refresh our minds here. World Schools Rugby Union Junior Group under Lems. The DC Thomas Bowl final went the way of Manith Maur Dinewer. 25-15 winners over Swansea Valley. The under Lems plate final clinched by Vale of Glamorgan. It's a good day for the Vale of Glamorgan. 40 points to 20 over Newport. And the under Lems DC Thomas Cup final itself. What a cracking match that was. And Pontepool flying high, defeating Bridge End by 35 points to 15. And then a skull, a pant, defeating Bro Merlin in the intermediate group. Year 9 Cup final. And now we've just seen a skull, Bro Morganog, uh, defeating Haverford West by two points. 20 points to 18. All credit, not just to the players, but to the coaches, to the teachers. Uh, match officials and uh, the parents of the players, of course, they're here in goodly numbers. Uh, it's been a festival of rugby here on the uh, Thursday. Plenty more to come, of course, tomorrow and uh, next week as well. 
Well, tomorrow we've got some uh, interesting matches. The uh, We Soda Inclusion Day. We'll see ethnically diverse schools uh, opening the uh, programme at 10 o'clock. The SEN schools at midday. Military veteran hubs, T1 or Touch at uh, 2.30. And then at 5 o'clock, mixed abilities, MA fixture. Uh, Port Talbot Panthers against Colwyn Bay Stingrays. And to round off the day, we've got a... Uh, int generation fixtures Cardiff Lions versus Wrexham Rhinos I took a bit of spit yeah this is the most difficult address isn't it uh, of all to the uh, the vanquished team but they've certainly acquitted uh, themselves well throughout this tournament defeating last year's winners Porth Cowell in the first round by 16 points to 14 two points in it and now they've been denied at the very pinnacle of the competition again by two points let's score Bro Morganog they defeated last year's uh, finalists Dufrin Amman It'll be a long coach ride home, won't it? To Haverford West and all points west from there. But I've enjoyed what I've seen of these players and uh, we'll uh, just put a little asterisk against some of these names and uh, none more so than the captain, Reese Lewis, who I thought uh, really played well and uh, communicated well with the referee. And you want to see that uh, at this uh, young age. Harvey Thomas, well, we've been told uh, what a, an athlete he is and uh, promises to be. Niall Smith, the outside half. There's good rugby being played down there in Pembroke. So it always has been. And they've always thrown the ball about. Uh, you can go back 40, 50 years and more. Haverford West, Nayland, Fishguard, St. David's, Milford Haven, Pembroke Dock, Pembroke Dock, Quinns, Langham. That's a tough place to go. I can assure you. Came back from there with a few bruises. <laughs> Looks an athlete, doesn't he, Harvey Thomas? Yeah, we've got a feel for them. Uh, contrasting emotions, uh, certainly, as the Skull Bro Morganog prepare to uh, receive their medals and the cup itself, of course. Finalists. Reese Lewis there on the right, the captain. So Simon Edwards here with uh, the medals. Liam Williams, he is the uh, Go Dot Compare player of the final. Yeah, smiles all round from a skull bro Morganog. Simon Edwards, a few minutes ago in my uh, alongside me here in the commentary box, must have been a, a personal best for him running down there to the uh, to the field to present the medals. Muxworthy 
Those probing kicks and pinning Haverford West back into their own 22. Now then, where's that cup? There it is. Safely in the hands of uh, young Freddie used to be. So here we are then. Get the fucking... So the winners of the Welsh Schools Rugby Union Intermediate Group Year 10. Ysgol Bro Morganog, Llangwarchiad Egresog i Ysgol Bro Morganog nhw i wneud llwyr cwpan blwyddyn deg y grŵp canolradd Undeb Rygbi Cymru. Y dyma'r gŵr, y ddyfarnwyd yn chwaraewr y gêm, chwaraewr mwy a gwerthor y gêm, mwy a disglair y gêm, Liam Williams. Mwy o rygbi ddod fori wrth gwrs, y minwch yn i eto bryd hynny, pan fydd yna ddarllediad llawn fan hyn o, o Stadium y Principality. So thank you very much for your company today, wherever you've been watching this festival of rugby at the Principality Stadium. Congratulations to all the winners and uh, well every player every team have been winners in their own way throughout the day but uh, the final word goes to the Escobro Morganog worthy winners of the Welsh Schools Rugby Union Intermediate uh, Group E 10 defeating Haverford West by two points and by 20 points to 18 we look for more scintillating rugby when you rejoin us again tomorrow and a uh, couple of days next week as well in this uh, great tournament, great competition, the road to the Principality in 2024. Right, good job.